Well, hi, y'all. Um, shalom. Good morning. Salutations. Greetings. Um, we are talking about letting love lead you this week. And I wanted to start off with a passage in 1 John 4, uh, starting in verse 7, which I'd like to read to you from the NIV. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. It's such a profound passage, you know, and it's not an easy passage. I mean, the business of God loving us and us loving him and loving one another, I mean, really loving each other, not as we understand love in a worldly sense, but the kind of love that doesn't fail, that, you know, lays down its life for one another, that kind of love, that's, that's far and above something we don't really understand on an earthly level. Um, the kind of love that God has poured out upon us. It's not really that we have loved him, even as we sing and declare and say, but it's more that he has loved us, which provokes and brings forth a love, a response of love from us to him and then to each other because of his love for us. Um, I want to share a little story. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's not a little story, actually, but um, it was a very big thing in my life at the time. I was in a very dark season, and my parents had died uh, in 99, uh, about nine months apart. And my mother's death was very, sh it was very upsetting to me, especially. My father had come to the Lord, and we had a good relationship and really made peace. But my mother's death was very difficult for me. <clears throat> And at that same time, I lost my voice for a full year. <clears throat> Excuse me, still recovering. And um, I, uh, I just struggled. I was struggling on a lot of levels. And in 2001, I found myself pregnant at 44 years old. And uh, it was not easy for me. It was not, uh, it was a real struggle for me because I was still really deep in a place of mourning and anger and grief over my parents, especially my mom, and uh, kind of lost, you know, just kind of lost in a dark season. And um, I was on tour, uh, I was five months pregnant, and I was on tour with my friend Don Cotson, and we were on the East Coast, one of my favorite places, and we were uh, actually in Cape Cod one night um, at my request, um, we were between concerts, and I wanted to be in Cape Cod, my favorite place on the planet. <clears throat> and I looked in the Yellow Pages because I felt I needed to go to church. I needed to be in church. I needed God to deal with my heart because my heart was a mess. And uh, so we picked a church, and uh, we went. And I was, uh, let's just say I was very withdrawn. I was almost to the point of nonverbal. It wasn't about people for me. It was really about God. It was like, I'm going to show up in your house and I, I need you to do something. I need you to talk to me or do something, you know. And I had my ideas about what that looked like. And so when I came in the door, um, there was this middle-aged uh, housewife. Her name was Irene. And she introduced herself to me, you know, and said how glad she was to, you know, to see me there, you know, all of this kind of thing. And I pretty much responded in grunts because I was pretty nonverbal at that point. She didn't manage to get out of me my name and that uh, we didn't live in the area. Um, but she welcomed me, you know. But I think from my body language, she knew very clearly that I was not uh, 
not in a very good place. Um, so we were waiting for the service. Some English guy was going to speak. And, um, and she, <laughs> Irene, comes back over to me, you know. And, um, you know, I, it's, it, it's like everything in my body language, everything in my words, everything in me is saying, go away. But she comes anyway, and she asks me, she says, I, I wonder if I could give you a tract of the Gospel of John. Now, inside myself, I just go, she doesn't think I'm a believer. Of course I'm a believer. Can't she see that I'm a believer? You know, all this is going on in my head. And I'm realizing, you know, just how dark I am in my countenance and my behavior and everything else. And of course, I'm going to say now no to her, which is just going to probably convince her that I am not a believer. Um, she eventually walks away with whatever she's thinking. And I am even more withdrawn inside myself. So it doesn't matter what the preacher says or the worship is because I'm so withdrawn and I'm getting angry and in pain at the same time. So after the service, Dawn goes up for prayer and then she comes back with the pastor in tow like she's going to introduce him to me um, as a music minister and everything. And I'm like, no, that's not happening. And I walk out the door and I'm in so much pain. I'm I'm crying at this point. I'm standing out there in my, f in the, f in my favorite place on the earth. I'm crying. It's drizzling and rainy out there. It's a gravel and dirt parking lot, and I hear these footsteps coming after me. <laughs> I can't believe this woman, and she says to me, Sally, I just want you to know that I love you. And I mean, like, four-letter words, bad words, everything you can think of goes off like fireworks in my head. It's like I managed to get out something civil in the most uncivil tone of voice I can possibly maneuver, which is to say, lady, you don't even know me, you know? It's like, how can you possibly love me? You don't even know me, you know? And I'm, I'm just, like, gone you know, and, and I figure I've, I've stopped her now, and that's the end of it, you know, but it isn't, of course, because in about two minutes, she says to me, I don't have to know you to love you, <laughs> and she walks away, and I'm standing there in the drizzle, and the gravel, and the dirt, and I'm thinking to myself, how does that work, you know, and it takes me months to realize it's not even about her. It's about God. It's about God who's trying to reach me in all my mucky self, in all that mire and all that stuff. He, he uses this middle-aged housewife lady who's a lot like me, for that matter, because I'm about the same age, to, to touch me to remind me of his unrelenting, unyielding, he will not let go love. What kind of love is that? I have never known that kind of love in my entire life, except with God, except with God. You know, I'm going to spit in his face, walk away, say everything I want to say in the greatest anger that I know, and he is still reaching out for me to hold me, to love me, to keep me. What kind of love is that? I, uh, I wrote a book sometime after that whole incident, you know, sometime after Shannon Lee came into this world and blessed us, really blessed us. Um, and in the book, I, I, I said a little bit about Irene, and, but moreover about his love. Irene didn't have to know me. God knew me. Every atom of my being, it was his heart that launched her into the parking lot after me. His love shining through her meek vessel. It is his love that has relentlessly pursued me all my life. He corrals my reckless passions with his fathomless love. 
I'm ready to jump the fence, plunge into the sea, run a million miles away. And that strong whisper blows across the surface of my soul, and I'm melted by the heat of his all-consuming fire for me. I cannot, will not love myself, yet he loves me in my ruins, my discontent, even in my separation from him. When I worship at the wrong altar, he reaches out, calling me to him from the ashes of my foolishness and sin, from the folly of my flesh. He laves me with indescribable love, soaking my soul until I am on my face before him. Irene let love lead her. <laughs> she let love lead her into the face of a really angry, ugly, dark soul that night. And God eventually broke through and made me understand that his love is everything, is everything. So I want to encourage you in this season to really open your heart up to his love and to respond to him in love and to respond to each of us. You know that we would love one another. This is the singular sign to the world that the Lord has come. God bless you. Shadow, you won't light up 
mountain you own climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow Chasing